Excellent. What's up guys, welcome back. I am returning with my monthly build series. This is uh, February, 2020. I missed last month. I apologize for that, but I was doing CES coverage at the beginning of the month. Just so you guys know what to expect though, this is a series where I talk about building a computer and choosing the parts that you need. So I'm going over a couple parts lists today. They are linked down in the video's description if you guys wanna check out the parts that I've chosen. If you want to see me actually build a computer, check out my builds playlist where I have many, many different builds over the past months and years that you can watch me put together. Uh, uh, everything from water cooling to entry level stuff. And if you want a step-by-step -step guide for how to build a computer, check out my beginner's guide to building a gaming PC playlist. I'll link that in the description too. And that will take you through everything you need to know step-by-step. -step. And spoiler alert, I'm doing an updated, refreshed how to build a PC in 2020 video. And the builds I'm going over today are going to be used in that. I will be doing this again next month. So if you guys uh, want to give me your feedback, check out the straw poll link in the description. You can vote on which types of builds I have have uh, lots of options there for you to choose from. So go ahead and vote. And of course the builds for this month are all based on your votes from last, well, last video. So that's why it says January, 2020, but we're actually looking at February. So for example, we wanted an AMD CPU. We wanted a mainstream platform. We want an Nvidia GPU. We want an ATX form factor. And then there's other stuff down below there. For the cost uh, range, we wanted 900 to $1,200. So that is why our first build for today is this one here, which is a 3600X and RTX 2070 base system, which is gonna run you about $1,150. I should also point out that the prices we're talking about here are for the core components of the system itself, not including, say, an operating system, a monitor, keyboard and mouse, and peripherals. Uh, when I do build lists for all that stuff, I say it's all inclusive. But right now we're looking at a total of about $1,144. And here I went for sort of a middle of the road system that's uh, somewhat akin to the $900 build I did towards the end of last year, but I just did a few tangible beneficial upgrades in certain areas. For example, we're going with the 3600X processor instead of the 3600. That's about a $30 price premium, but you're gonna get a CPU that runs faster out of the box and potentially can overclock a little bit better as well. I added a aftermarket air cooler with a Cooler Master Hyper 212 Black Edition. Only a $35 upgrade, but it's gonna get you better cooling and it's gonna get you a cooler overall system. And it also looks pretty nice since it's the Black Edition. I also decided to go with an X570 motherboard and the main benefit to that is going to be PCI Express Gen 4 support, which we're not necessarily taking advantage of with the rest of the parts in this build. But a lot of the time, if you're building your own system, you want to overbuild it to some degree so you can have forward compatibility. That's also the reason I'm sticking with the AM4 platform from AMD for right now, because it's got a lot of processors that are currently available for it, a wide selection of motherboards that are available for it, and we're expecting another family of processors, the 4000 series, to launch later this year. So should be an upgrade path there as well. Taking a look at the individual parts, we have the Ryzen 5 3600X. Again, this is gonna run uh, one to 200 megahertz faster than the 3600 out of the box without any tweaking or tuning. It is about $30 more. You can get the 3600 non-X for about $175 right now. Definitely consider that processor, especially if you might be overclocking. Uh, the 3600X should be a little bit better binned. So if you're overclocking both of them, you should still be able to overclock the 3600X a little bit better than the 3600. But for a lot of first time builders paying a little bit more money up front for a processor that's just gonna run a little bit faster without you having to do any tweaking or tuning is worth the money. Again, the cooler, the Hyper 212 Black Edition, it's only $35, it's got a nice 120 millimeter fan, no RGB nonsense or anything like that, but a marked improvement over the stock heat sink fan that ships with the processor, and it's gonna be a little bit quieter too. If you're looking at X570 motherboards, typically you're gonna spend 170 to $180 or more if you want to get a decent one. I chose this one because it has been hailed as one of the better entry-level motherboards for X570. It's got a nice set of features, it's got good power delivery so it can handle uh, upgraded 12 core and 16 core processors if you decide to go that route in the future. It's got a couple M.2 slots integrated for uh, high speed SSDs if you decide to add those as well. And there's a quick look at the IO2. Uh, integrated Wi-Fi is also a nice thing to have. Granted, it's something that can be added pretty easily to any motherboard via a USB adapter, but uh, having it integrated with a decent antenna included is nice too. 
For memory, 16 gigs is pretty much the standard right now, and you want DDR4 memory to be compatible with this platform. For the Ryzen 3000 series processors, 3600 is the speed that's recommended to be kind of the sweet spot, and this G-Skill Ripjaws 5 kit has proven to be compatible with Ryzen. Just plug in the XMP values and you should be good to go. Good speed as well as good latency at cast latency 16, only about $85 for this kit. No RGB or anything like that, but uh, RGB does not make your computer faster despite popular opinions about that. This is a kit that I've tried personally. It's great to have a budget option that is actually gonna work with Ryzen and it's nice and fast too. All right, for an SSD, we have a 480 gig and that is a 500 gig class SSD. And I just went with the 2.5 inch SATA SSD. There are faster M.2 NVMe SSDs out there. You do have to pay 10, 20, $30 more for those depending on their speeds. Here you can get up and running for about $53, which is a very good price per gigabyte. And then of course, uh, storage is something that's very easy to expand. If you want to upgrade to an M.2 NVMe drive in the future, you can buy that and add it to your motherboard. The graphics card choice is one that's going to be a pretty significant impact on the overall cost of your build and basically you pay more money for faster graphics cards. That said, if you're looking at the Nvidia side, which was what was recommended in the straw poll, if you're getting above the $400 price point where AMD still stays competitive with their RX 5700 and 5700 XT cards, you're gonna be looking at an RTX 2070, RTX 2070 Super, RTX 2080 or above, and those just tend to scale up by about $100 a pop going from one tier to the next. That said, when the 2070 Supers came out, the 2070s saw some pretty nice price drops down to about $500. And this one from Asus is a dual fan uh, cooled card. It is triple slot, but uh, you know, you're not probably not gonna be adding a second one of these if you're being sensible. And it's only $440, which is a good 30 or 40 bucks cheaper than any of the other RTX. RTX 2070s out there right now. If you can't find this one for this price, because I have a feeling it's not gonna stick around, then definitely check out the RX 5700 XTs, which you can typically find for around $400. And then beyond that, if you want more graphics power, you gotta pay more money for it right now. So just sort of tack the extra price onto the overhead, overall cost of the build. And you know, you could easily drop in a, a 2070 Super or an RTX 2080 into this build as well. That is partially because it's a full-size build, ATX. So uh, I went with the NZXT H510, ATX mid-tower case. Uh, the non-I version of this case is very reasonably priced, very well designed, plenty of room inside to install your stuff. It comes with a couple fans pre-installed, which is nice too. Just a solid all around case for about $70 available on Amazon and Best Buy. And it's hard to argue too much for spending too much more than this on a case, unless you find one that's particularly suited to your aesthetic tastes, of course. Uh, and then lastly, we're gonna need a power supply. Here's the EVGA GD, or, or I've been calling this the goddamn series from EVGA. Uh, Cause goddamn, that's a reasonable, somewhat price. This is 80 plus gold. So again, kind of like with the 3600X and the X570 board in this build, I'm trying to get you guys a little bit more uh, feature wise. So 80 plus gold means it's gonna be a bit more efficient, gonna draw a little bit less power compared to like an 80 plus bronze unit in the same build. And you can get this on Newegg right now for about $66 after a mail-in rebate. It's not the fanciest power supply, like it's not modular or anything like that, but since the power supply has a basement, you can tuck all these extra cables down there and they're all black. So the ones that do show should still look pretty. So that's my $1,150 build. And again, you guys, if you want to sort of shave down the cost a little bit to get yourself back down towards about $900, just look at my build that I did at the end of November because that has very similar setup to this. I just went with like the 3600 instead of the 3600 XT. A B450 motherboard, which you can find for about $115 versus the X570s, which are 60 or $70 more than that. There are of course a few more features available on the system that costs a little bit more money, but that is the beauty of building your own system and picking your own parts. You can choose to spend a little bit more money if it's a feature that you find you will need and you can choose to save a little bit of money if you're like, you know, I don't see myself needing PCI Express Gen 4 at any time in the near future. My second build for this month is a sub $400 starter PC. And I'll be very direct with you guys. This is a very slight variation of the $350 starter PC that I did back at the beginning of December. This one's coming in at about $383 before tax and stuff right now. And the main difference here is the processor or the APU or the 
CPU with graphics integrated that I've chosen here. Part of the reason why this build costs so little is because there is not a discrete graphics card. You can add that to this build in the future and upgrade it. That's one of the nice things and that's why it's a starter build. This will get you up and running. You can game at 1080p and then in the future you could upgrade the CPU, you could add a GPU. Uh, there's a whole range of things that you could drop into this build and make it better and faster if you have some more money in the future. Now the 2200G is our quad core processor and this is effectively a first gen Ryzen based uh, CPU, but it is a quad core. So that's that's its main benefit over the 3000G, which is about 30 bucks cheaper. The 3000G is available right now. I think BNH actually has it for $55. $30 more for this one is gonna get you about double the amount of cores. So it is worth the extra money in my opinion. However, if you're really trying to get by for now and then you're planning to upgrade your CPU in the future, take a look at that 3000G because it does have integrated graphics as well and you can get a system up and running with that. Uh, it's just not gonna be quite as powerful as the 2200G. The integrated graphics and the core counts are not the same with the 3000G. This one's available for 85 bucks on Amazon. Looks like it'll be back in stock next week. And then of course you're gonna need a motherboard to uh, drop it into. And for that I have the Gigabyte B450 Aorus M Micro. As mentioned with the X570 build just before this, you're not gonna have PCI Express Gen 4 support, which doesn't really matter because the 2200G doesn't have PCI Express Gen 4 support either. But this motherboard is micro ATX, so it's a little bit smaller, but you still get expansion slots. You still get an M.2 slot there for a high-speed NVMe SSD. It does have those video outs to use with the integrated graphics on your CPU, and then uh, there's the rest of the I.O. right there. Remember, it's fairly easy to make a full-size ATX build with the core components here. You would just want to swap out your motherboard and the case for a full-size ATX version of those. That might give you a little bit more room for expansion in the future, uh, but this build as set up right now, micro ATX means it's just gonna take up a little bit less space on your desk. Uh, here it is, case in point, at least the micro ATX build in the Thermaltake Versa H18, uh, which is the case I chose for this build because it's only $55 and it has a power supply basement down at the bottom as well as tempered glass. So for those of you who just don't have quite as much desk space to work with, or you're just trying to keep things a little bit more minimal in your work area, uh, Micro ATX I think is a viable option. Next we got memory. This is a Team T-Force Vulcan kit, 16 gigs. It's DDR4 3200, uh, which is good for the 2000 series of Ryzen processors, your first and second gen, uh, basically. It's only about $77 over on Amazon right now, but uh, take a look at that G-Skill kit from the first build as well. It's only about 10 bucks more. It's rated a little bit higher speed. So again, if you're looking forward to potentially updating this CPU in this build in the future, it might be worth uh, getting a little bit faster memory right out of the gate. That said, this will save you 10 bucks and we'll get the job done just fine. For storage, again, just to keep prices down, we went with a 240 or 250 gig class SATA SSD, this time the ADATA SU635. And that's because it's only $35. So fairly minimal additional price for storage here. You can get the 480 gig version of this for just 20 bucks more. So consider that, I mean, there's even a one terabyte version, but then we're talking about adding more to the price and then we're not staying sub $400 anymore. The case, as I kind of just showed you, is this Thermaltake Versa H18. Just a really nice deal for about $55. And again, that tempered glass side panel I've built in this case. It's got USB 3.0 up front. It's got plenty of ventilation as well, a nice mesh front panel. So uh, even if you're adding uh, some higher end hardware in the future or upgrading, uh, you still will get by just fine. It includes 120 millimeter fan, which should be just fine for this uh, minimal 400-ish dollar build. But if you did upgrade your parts in the future, you might consider adding some more intake fans up front just to promote better airflow. Finally, we got a power supply here. We went with 80 plus bronze rated and a 600 watt unit, which should be fine for this build. Actually overkill for this build with just the APU, but we're choosing this power supply at 600 watts because that means it can support a discrete graphics card in the future, which is gonna draw a decent chunk more power. And keeping your power supply ready for that upgrade is gonna mean you're not gonna have to pull it out and rewire everything if you do upgrade your system. You can just drop in the GPU, plug in some PCI Express graphics connectors, and this power supply only costs $46 after a mail-in rebate at Newegg. Heck, it's only $50 at Amazon without a rebate apparently, so uh, either of those options are fine. Oh, and just like the gold rated power supply from the first uh, round, it's not fully modular, but it does have all black cables, so it should look okay. And guys, that's gonna wrap it up for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Again, links to all the parts I've picked out today are down in the video's description, as well as links to the PC part picker list for these. Did you notice I was using dark mode for PC part picker this time around? Uh, the dark mode looks pretty cool. I like dark mode. 
Well done, PC Part Picker. Uh, thanks again for watching though, guys, and I will be following up with a tutorial, a build guide for at least one of these systems. I think I'm probably gonna do both though, especially since I've already got most of the stuff I need for the micro ATX build. Lastly, if you're interested, check out my store at paulsharbar.net where you can buy shirts, mugs, pint glasses, and other super sweet merch. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.